Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Bethany. I'm a mom of three and I do motherhood and lifestyle videos here on my channel. I share about the regular day-to-day -day things about being a mom and everything in between. So if you're new here, make sure you guys do subscribe. That would appreciate that so, so much. Today's video is basically gonna be all about what I wish I would have known before becoming pregnant. Now this is another video in my series. I've already done two different videos in this series. Um, one is what I wish I would have known before having more kids or adding another baby to your family. And then my other video is what I wish I would have known before I started solid food with my baby. So if you guys wanna go check out those videos as well, I hope that they're really, really helpful to you. And I've currently been pregnant four times, so I thought I would share some of my experiences with you. I am just a mom of three, this is my experience. I'm not in any way a doctor or a professional, so this is just what I've gone through and what I've noticed and some things that I wish I would have known before becoming pregnant for the first time. So again, I hope you find this video helpful. If you know a first time mom or someone who is looking to become pregnant, um, this is a good video to share with them. So I hope you do that and yeah, let's just get started. Okay, so the first thing on my list is that I wish I would have known that a lot of symptoms start early on. And this can actually even mean before you take that pregnancy test. So for me personally, I find when I am about three weeks pregnant or you know close to four weeks before I even test that I get so lethargic. That is something that happens to me every single time I become pregnant and I notice right away that I'm totally pregnant, the sign is there and a lot of these symptoms start like right away um, as soon as that baby um, is implanted and is growing. And it's so amazing how our bodies work that way. Um, another great symptom is that um, you can have um, breast tenderness or you can feel nauseous, things like that. Um, I actually did make a early pregnancy signs video a while back. So if you guys wanna go check that one out as well, I kind of go into all of the early symptoms that you can experience before taking a a pregnancy test and kind of how you can kind of tell. But again, everyone is different and I find that the more women I talk to you about being pregnant and just being a mom is that everyone's experience is unique. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, I did find that a lot of the symptoms started early on, not necessarily my belly getting big for the first time. My first pregnancy, um, my belly really didn't get big until almost 20 weeks. And so um, I actually, didn't even really have a baby bump until then. So everyone, again, is different. But for me, I for my first time being pregnant, it took me a long time to show. So I think that's one thing I wish I kind of would have known. I was kind of excited to show off my baby bump, but no one really noticed until I was about halfway. But since I've been pregnant four times, I find that the more times you become pregnant, the earlier you start showing. So that's one thing that I've learned and noticed about my body is that I show so, so much earlier now that I've been pregnant a few more times. So another thing on my list that I wish I would have known is just the anxieties that come along with being pregnant. Now, I know a lot of people don't talk about this because you know being pregnant is so wonderful and it is such an exciting time, but it can be a scary time where you kind of feel out of control and there's not a lot of things that um, you can do um, to stop certain things from happening or your body changing, which I'll get into in a second. But one of the things that I actually have experienced myself is having a miscarriage and the anxiety about having one of those and you know losing your baby is is definitely high and you know becoming pregnant after having a miscarriage was was definitely a lot different for me. Um, I was always very aware of. Um, that miscarriage is quite common, um, but I never thought that it would actually happen to me. It actually happened to me after having my two oldest kids, and it's definitely something to, yeah, be aware of, but know that it's totally normal to have anxiety over. Like I said, not being able to feel in control of your body. Um, just the changes that are happening can be very drastic and can change you a lot where you don't really recognize yourself and that can bring a lot of anxiety as well. So I highly recommend that you communicate those anxieties to someone that um, cares for you and that you can trust um, because motherhood is not meant to do alone and that is kind of one of the things that made me start this YouTube channel is that 
I felt very alone in my feelings and being a first time mom and a lot of those anxieties I didn't really express. And so it's so important for you to be able to do that and to make sure that you feel supported, um, especially when you are feeling anxious. Okay, one thing I wish I would have known is that sleep can get really difficult at around 20 weeks. So like I said earlier, your belly really doesn't show it up until like, you know, a halfway point for me. And so I'm a tummy sleeper. And so that became kind of difficult for me because I couldn't sleep on my tummy anymore because it's actually not good for the baby for you to sleep on your stomach because it's not good to be squishing them on your stomach. So that became quite a challenge for me. Um, one thing I do recommend if you're a tummy sleeper or a side sleeper or just any kind of sleeper at all, honestly, get a big pregnancy pillow. It's awesome. You can just like hug it and cuddle it and I loved putting um, it between my knees and I found it so comfortable and I still have it because sometimes I still like to use it even though I'm not pregnant. So I highly recommend getting a pregnancy pillow. It was definitely a must have for me. So like I said earlier, um, one thing I wish I would have known is just how many changes your body goes through. It really is quite an amazing thing. Our bodies are so, so specially created to be able to create life within them. Like it's actually crazy to think about. And one thing I really wasn't prepared for is just how much my body would change. Um, and just how, um, you know, you would be left with, um, you know, certain things that you wouldn't have had necessarily before, um, like stretch marks and scars. And for me, um, I, you know, a lot of things about my body did change. And so um, for me, I, I really had a hard time with even gaining some weight. And um, for my first time, I had to battle a little bit of insecurity and to be, you know, totally honest with you. Um, and that was hard. And, you know, again, like I said earlier about having anxieties, it's not meant to, for you to go through alone. And it is good for you to talk about those things and be open about that. Um, with someone that you trust and because it's so normal it's so normal as women um i know all of us have certain things that we don't um necessarily like about ourselves which is so sad um and i know that um speaking for myself um that we all have things that we would want to change about ourselves and um you know it's hard when you um kind of add this um, out of control situation where you aren't in control of your of what's happening to your body and um, I just want to know that I'm there with you. I totally know what that feels like and um, You're not alone in that at all. And I I wish that you know, we would just have More support knowing that it's it's normal but also that you are beautiful, you are creating life, and that is an amazing thing. So basically, I just wanna encourage you and say that it is normal to feel that way and just feeling out of control with things, um, that you're not alone in that. And I think most moms can say that we've been there. Yeah, we're with you. Okay, one thing I wish I would've known, you know, before I got pregnant was to take more time off before, you know, not working. Um, so I actually did go on a maternity leave with my first pregnancy. I actually had about a month or so before I had my daughter and it was so great. I highly recommend it to everyone. Having at least two weeks before, I mean, it's obviously sometimes it's out of your control, but if you can take two weeks off work before you have your baby, that would be just amazing. It gives you time to prepare for baby. It gives you time to just relax and rest and just kind of take in those last few days of it just being being you and your partner, your husband. I really, 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 really highly recommend that um, and not working right up until your due date unless you absolutely have to. Because I know like that's not everyone's situation that they're able to, but if you can, take at least a week or two off before you have your baby. I know I really enjoyed that time before I had my baby, so I highly recommend that you do the same. Okay, another thing that I wish I would have known is that baby will come when they decide, basically. If you're new here to my channel, I've actually had three C-sections. And so for me, I didn't anticipate that being, you know, my pregnancy journey for all, or giving birth for all of my kids, but it's just kind of what happened for me. And I, I really wouldn't have it any other way because I wouldn't be here without them, which is amazing. You can do all the things to kickstart labor. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, but that baby's gonna decide to come when they wanna come. Okay, one thing I wish I would've known is that some foods may become absolutely repulsive to you. For me, I had some food aversions and mine were basically like cooked ground beef and eggs. 
Like I just couldn't handle the smell or even like chicken. I couldn't handle any of those. They were just so, so gross to me. Like now they're completely fine, but when I'm pregnant, I just, I just cannot handle those smells. So it's so interesting how everyone is different and even just some of the cravings that I had, like I was obsessed with like this one salad, this last pregnancy that I had, um, I was obsessed with it. I ate it every single day and now I just like can't stand it. It's so weird. It's so interesting how your tastes and your likes change. And um, yeah, even I was obsessed with tomato soup for my first pregnancy with my daughter. Like it's just weird things that you kind of just love or other things that you just like cannot stand. It's just, yeah, it's wild. Okay, one thing I wish I would have known is that you don't actually need like the most perfect and like Pinterest worthy nursery to care for your baby. I know it can be really easy to buy cute things and that's totally amazing, um, but you actually don't need all the super expensive baby gear for your baby to be loved. But know that if your baby has a safe place to sleep, has love, clothes, diapers, and is well fed that your baby will thrive and it'll be okay. Beyond all of the gadgets and like all the things, you know, I really found that even when I didn't buy certain things um, before having my baby, like say even um, like a breast pump or like an electrical bre breast pump or um, just like big kind of items like that before you even really know if you're going to need them. Um, I highly recommend even just waiting until after the baby is born to buy a few things that you kind of know that you will need um, instead of buying them before when you really don't know. So yes, get the essentials. Yes, I've totally made like baby essentials videos and everything like that. So yeah, there are definitely things that can be helpful to you, but you don't need the extravagant nursery for your baby to be loved and to thrive. Um, it's obviously a nice thing and if you're able to do that, that's amazing and yeah, you guys just do you, but um, don't feel the pressure to do that. I just wanna let you know that it's, it's not a requirement for you to be a good mom and to have like a crazy amazing nursery. Like when my latest son was born, he just had like a little nook in the corner of our bedroom here and that was, that was kind of it and um, we didn't have a nursery because my other son was using the crib still and that's just what we we did and we just rolled with it and um, everything turned out okay so just so you know don't put so much expectation on yourself to buy all the things and you know spend all this money on baby before they get here and if you want to that's your choice but don't feel pressured to all right and the last thing on my list for today's video is that your experience will be completely unique to you. I know that you can read up all about pregnancy and all the symptoms and everything, which is kind of just a blanket generalization of what will happen. Um, but your experience will be unique to you because you are unique and you are um, your own person. And so I hope you found this video helpful and that it kind of gives you a bit of comfort maybe going into pregnancy. Know that when you become a mom, um, there can be a lot of outside pressure to do certain things or buy certain things, um, but just make the best decisions that you see that is best for you. Um, and just be confident in the decisions that you're gonna make because you're gonna do a great job. Anyway, I hope you guys again found this video helpful and we'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.